All right, you guys, what is going on? And welcome back to the channel. Now, as I'm sure most of you guys have seen, Subaru decided to not produce or not continue with the new generation of the STI. We are getting the WRX platform that already is available for pre-order for those of you that are contemplating on getting one. So yesterday, March 11th, Subaru actually announced this is a direct letter from Subaru, uh, their president, Thomas J. Dahl. I don't know what the J stands for. Maybe Johnson, Jerry, Jack something along those lines. But as the automotive ma marketplace continues to move towards electrification, Subaru is focused on how the future sports and performance cars should evolve to meet the needs of changing marketplace and the regulations and requirements for greenhouse gases, zero emissions vehicles, and corporate average fuel economies. As part of the effort, Subaru Corporation is exploring opportunities for the next generation Subaru WRX STI, including electrification. In the meantime, a next generation internal combustion engine WRX STI will not be produced. So. With that statement right there, the 2021 model year was the last year that Subaru decided to produce an internal combustion engine STI. So if you have a 2021 STI, you're probably sitting on a gold mine right now. We still, uh, and that's based upon the new WRX platform. Uh, we still have a strong presence with the all new Subaru WRX and just launched Subaru BRZ. BRZ is honestly actually a fun car. I enjoy mine. Uh, the STI brand represents the zenith of Subaru's performance vehicles, exemplifying Subaru's unique DNA and rally heritage. As we look into the future, we also look forward to incorporating the essence of the STI into our next generation of vehicles. Now, with that said, Subaru is going, they're not saying they're discontinuing the STI. We probably won't see an STI for the next four to five years. Roughly estimating based off of how long Subaru has ran their chassis in the past. But with that said, the next one will more or less likely be purely electric. It could be a hybrid. We don't know quite yet, but based off of what we read in that email, it sounds like they're pushing full electric vehicles with zero emissions, not the PZEV like they've been doing with the partial zero emissions vehicles. They're going all out zero. Now, I think this is completely going to kill the STI as a car. Some of you may disagree with me, and I'm not saying it's just going to kill the STI based off the fact that it's an electric car. Come on, we're past that. It's 2020 something. I've got some thoughts and opinions about this. You guys know I've had damn near 23 Subarus at this point, all turbo models with the exception of maybe a handful of them. I love my STIs, I love my WRXs. And there's certain key features that I love about them that Subaru is now pulling away from the cars. And Subaru doesn't even need to continue producing the WRX STI. If you look at their sales numbers in just 2021 alone, the WRX and STI combined was only 5% of Subaru's total sales, which is very minute. If Subaru decided they didn't want to produce a WRX or STI anymore, it wouldn't really hurt their sales numbers. They could just continue on. In 2021 alone, they only sold a combined 27,141 WRXs and STIs. To put that in perspective, to put that in perspective, the Outback and the Forester both sold 154,000 models of each. That's about 300,000 of just those two models. Coming in in the STI only, and the BRZ did worse, it only did 2,320. So I mean, if Subaru really wanted, they could kill off their entire sports car, sports car lineup and it wouldn't really make a difference to them. Now, here's where things start to differ for Subaru with them pushing the STI into full electric. They're getting away from their demographic with these cars. The general, based off of statistics and data, the general buying age for people who go out and buy STIs is about 35 years old for brand new. That's just general data collected by Subaru and put out there. Now, what makes the STI such a driver and enthusiast car is the fact that it's still a mechanical feeling driver connected car. When you start removing those principles away, it starts to pull away from the demographic of who you're trying to reach. Look at anybody out there who has a WRX and STI. What do they immediately do with the cars? They modify them. They, they do engine swap. We did an engine swap, but people do standard EJ swaps. If they have an older GD and they have a two liter, they go to a 2.5 somebody has a GR, they might swap in another 2.5. Who knows? The, the options are endless with Subarus. They're pretty much like Legos from 2002 to 2021 at this point, which is still a lot of EJ cars out there. So, I mean, even if you are looking at getting an EJ based one, you still have plenty of opportunity to do so. But this new electrification idea of bringing it full electric, I don't see working in Subaru's favor. It could be the fact that they rushed the, the 2.4 in the WRX and they just weren't ready for the STI. So they're pushing it off and they decided to cut it off at that point. Now it's kind of a letdown for people and it's kind of shitty a Subaru to do. I know there's a handful of people out there who were waiting to get the new STI or waiting to get an STI in general up until Subaru released information regarding the new STI. And the fact that they've come out and they've said that they're not producing any more internal combustion engine STIs kind of puts a lot of people in a weird place because now STI, we all know STI values are going to start going up even more than they already have because people are going to start driving the price up. They're going to start saying, well, they don't make them anymore. You can't go buy a new one. So they're gonna, the prices are obviously going to reflect that. Now, because of that, the people who are waiting are now in a really crappy position because Subaru's 
decided to wait until this point when you couldn't even put in an order for a 2021 STI anymore to now they're in this funk where they got to try to find one for a reasonable price. So we were looking at used STI prices last night and it's insane. It is absolutely insane. Like a 84,000 mile 2019 STI was going for like $37,000. It's absolutely ridiculous. Brand new, they costed $37,000 MSRP for a base, which is interesting. Now, here is the other aspect with electrification if Subaru does decide to go this 100% electric route with the STI. It's going to drive us the base MSRP price of that car so much. I pulled a lot of information from Tesla only because Tesla has been doing electric cars for a long time. They've been doing performance electric cars for a while now. If you look at just the base Model 3 performance, the MSRP of that car comes in at about $58,890 before tax title license. That puts the car buying demographic for STI owners into an entirely new category. And that is with Tesla having all of the production stuff already set up. They have the resources. They know what they're doing. Subaru is just getting into this for a performance. Keep in mind performance. Yes, yeah, Subaru has done perform or Subaru has done EV in the past, but this is strictly performance based. It's going to drive up the cost of the STI significantly. In 2004, the STI's MSRP was $31,000. In 2017, the MSRP of an STI was $37,000. The overall cost for a brand new STI over that span of 17 years really hasn't gone up all that much. Now that you're pushing full electric, it's going to cost more. Those rare earth metals are not going to pay for themselves and that cost is going to be passed on the, to the consumer, which is us, because we buy the car. Plus with the additional, the chip shortages, manufacturing delays, all of these other factors playing a role in manufacturing right now, especially for automakers, it's going to be delayed, 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 delayed. It's going to be very expensive as well. I estimate if Subaru does decide to follow through with this, the Subaru could also pull the plug on an EV STI also because they said they weren't gonna be releasing one until their technology was up to par, which could be five years, 10 years, who knows it. Because of that, it's going to drive the price up and I estimate the STI coming in at a full EV performance model around 55 to $65,000, somewhere in that price range. And that completely pushes out the demographic. Like I said earlier, the average buying age for people who go out and buy brand new STIs based off of Subaru statistics is about 35 years of age. That completely destroys their demographic. If you look at the average, if you look at the average household income for people, I'm gonna include 24 year olds because 24 year olds also buy brand new STIs. I'm go, we're going 24 to 40 for this is between $49,920 and $58,000 per year. That puts the STI at an unattainable price range for the demographic that they're already selling to, which could completely destroy their sales of the STI. And I could be totally wrong here. Subaru could come back and be like, hey, just kidding, we are gonna do an ICE engine again or we're gonna do a hybrid setup. But then that detracts some more. Hybrids and full electric vehicles don't have one thing that we all love and that's a manual transmission. The STI six speed is now dead. I guarantee you that that transmission from Subaru will never come back again if they do decide to pursue this EV hybrid technology, which they are pursuing and it's already been confirmed. But the big thing for me is the modification potential. You are severely, I feel like Subaru isn't directly listening to their demographic of what we want as consumers. We buy the cars, the manufacturer should reflect back to be like, all right, hey, this is what people are buying, this is what people like, this is what people want. And then they go completely left field. And I know a big portion of it is due to EPA crackdown. When it comes to emissions and regulations for manufacturers like this, they look at it as a whole for all of their vehicles combined. And if Subaru does pursue this EV technology and they do decide to push it onto other cars in their lineup, they could bring back the internal combustion engine for the STI if they can get their emission standards below where the EPA is setting. Now, one thought that I had, which in my opinion would be a better idea for Subaru to pursue if they decided to do this, is use that EV technology that you're pursuing, put it in the Impreza, put it in the Crosstrack, put it in the Forester, put it in the Ascent. Keep the WRX, the BRZ, and the STI as ICE. Which if you guys don't know what I mean whenever I'm saying ICE, it's just internal combustion engine. By moving all of their Econo cars, to EV technology that frees up those greenhouse emissions that Subaru has to stay under per the EPA for their performance cars, which means they could make, they could keep pushing, keep making better, keep improving the ICE engine for what they're doing. And I'm not saying this to sound archaic or dinosauric, that's not even a word. I understand that technology is changing, okay? I understand that at some point, ICE engines will be completely phased out, but in the meantime, there's no need to do it right now, especially on your performance car. They're the only real, 
full EV performance cars I can think of off the top of my head are Teslas, and they are insanely expensive. Not only to buy outright, like yes, you can charge them for cheap, but the initial purchase cost is just insanely higher than it is of an STI or a Subaru in the matter. And it pushes the STI into this new territory where if you're spending 55 to $60,000 on a Subaru, the people in that demographic, they're gonna say, why am I spending $60,000 on a Subaru when I can go get the BMW? I can go get the Audi, I can go get the Volkswagen, I can go get all these other higher end cars that I want to, why would I even buy the Subaru? Which I think is going to hurt Subaru later because no one's gonna be buying it. And I say that under the presumption that Subaru themselves, hey, this could be a fantastic full electric or or hybrid sports car. I'm not saying that Subaru is not going to come out with a fantastic feeling car. But the key point that I'm trying to get at here is Subaru is detracting away from their demographic, their buying audience, and they're moving into something else that's a little bit uncharted for them. Like they've, they've never done an all EV performance car. And with estimation of price tag or MSRP on it, I just, I honestly don't think it's gonna do well. I know for me and many others, it's a little bit disappointing to see STI kill off the ice STI, I don't like saying ICE STI, the internal combustion STI. It's a little bit disappointing to see, especially when we've been hyped up over the past couple of years that we're getting a 2.4 liter STI with the new FA24 platform. I was, personally, I was curious to see what the FA24 was going to do in the new STI and see the capabilities of that engine, but I guess we're just gonna have to test that on the BRZ now to see how far we can push the BRZ to replicate what Subaru could have done. And there's no, and I guarantee that Subaru has production, or not production cars, but test cars that they've done with the FA24. Um, we've seen it in Japan. They have the Lavorg with the FA24. They have WRXs. They have more vehicles there that we don't get in the United States. Plus, I just don't, I personally don't like messing with electricity. I'm not a big fan of it. Not a big fan of it at all. I've been shocked a couple times. Not, a, not, not my cup of tea, not my thing, but what do you guys think? I think that Subaru, even if Subaru does decide to pursue this full electric EV STI, I don't think it's going to do well. Uh, they seem to be steering farther and farther away from the people who are buying the cars. Like I know for the bulk majority of everybody here on the channel, what do we do? What do all 80,000 of us do? We modify these cars. We do bolt-ons, we try to go faster, and there's no doubt in my mind that a full EV STI would be quicker. Don't get me wrong, but the STI's never been about full-on speed. It's always been a driver connected, fun car. It's a, it's a turbo, all wheel drive, four door car. And it seems like all of those are disappearing now. So let me know your guys' thoughts down in the comments. I know I actually don't know anybody who's actually glad that Subaru got rid of the ICE STI. Some of you may be, but let me know your thoughts down below. How do you guys think if Subaru does decide to pursue this full EV STI, how's it gonna do if they decide to bring it to market? A lot of you guys were DMing me, asking me about my thoughts on it. Yeah, we did the live stream last night, but that was kind of going through talking about things a little bit more so. But that's all I got. So let me know what you guys think down below. And with that, if you guys like the video, you know what to do. If you like the video, like the video. I'm not gonna tell you to do it. If you wanna subscribe, you're an adult, you can do it. But with that, I will catch you guys in the next one. So peace out, homies.